friends and welcome to week 35 of my pregnancy if you missed any of my updates so far I have a playlist where I have done every single week of pregnancy I have not missed a week there are somewhere I was a little out of it there were some where my lighting was a little off my sound was a little off I got a little lazy with things but I showed up every week for you guys 35 videos on my channel to this day that I have created for my pregnancy. I guess not 35, because technically my first video was weeks one, zero through four. So 35 minus four videos. There's been 31 videos on my channel about my pregnancy. And I also have several chronic illnesses, including POTS, fibromyalgia, SIBO, lots of other things going on. You can learn all about them on my channel, but it's an interesting pregnancy when you have all these extra things going on besides just being pregnant. Being pregnant is hard enough as it is, and then you add in all these chronic illnesses, it has just been an adventure. But I brought you guys along every single week, and today I wanted to give back to you for watching these videos and for being here with me and supporting me through this pregnancy. So I asked on Instagram for questions. If you guys aren't following me on there, make sure you follow me on Instagram, amy underscore Esther. And that's where I ask anytime I wanna ask you guys questions. That's where it's the easiest place to ask. So I asked you any of your questions about life, pregnancy with chronic illness, and I'm gonna answer those today for you. But I will start with just like the general updates of my pregnancy. So first off, 35 weeks, you guys, we're getting there, we're on the countdown. And this week, I weigh 154 pounds. I think I've been that for like two or three weeks now. I I feel like that number just keeps coming up. I don't really remember. I haven't been like writing it down. I'll have to go back and look at my videos, but I know last week I was also 154. So I guess I'm just kind of staying the same. I don't know. I feel like I eat a ton. My appetite has increased so much these past few weeks. So I feel like I eat way more, but I'm, I've kind of like evened out with the weight gain. Super weird. Um, but I definitely have a bigger appetite now. I feel like the nausea has gotten way better. Finally, 35 weeks. Isn't that when you should not feel nauseous anymore? Most people, it's after like 12 weeks. And mine, it did get better after the first trimester, and then it just came back. Ridiculous. But it does seem like it's getting a lot better. And my baby, officially, I was going to say this last week, but I wasn't for sure. This week, I know the baby has dropped. I feel like I can breathe better, and we're currently in the crazy virus time and so masks are now required everywhere where i live they are required at grocery stores and all those places and i cannot breathe well i couldn't breathe with a mask on because of this baby already sitting on my lungs and then i had to wear a mask and it was so hard for me so i just had to avoid going out and doctor's appointments, I especially would wear one, of course, because that's where the high-risk people all gather together. And so I would always wear a mask going to the doctor, but man, it was hard because I just could hardly breathe. But I feel like I can breathe again. I can breathe normally when I'm not um, wearing a mask. And then, of course, a mask isn't fun to wear, but it's gotten better where it's not completely miserable the whole time I'm wearing a mask. So that's super nice. He's definitely dropped though. He looks lower, he feels lower, which means there's a lot of pain down there. <laughs> it's getting more painful down there, especially when I walk around a lot. And I have this weird pain at the top of my belly that almost feels like a bruise on the inside. And I don't know if it's him like kicking in the same spot and like literally bruising me. Someone tell me if that's possible. I feel like that has to be possible, right? but that's what it feels like. It feels like I have a bruise on the inside and it's in one spot on the top of my belly. It's super weird. I definitely have more contractions. I get a lot of Braxton Hicks if I'm moving a lot, if I'm um, like walking around a lot or if I do a big cleaning or something like that, which is funny because I'm doing a lot more of that now because my iron shots are finally starting to help me. I would say this is the best week I've had energy wise since probably like, 20 weeks pregnant. I have so much more energy now and I want, okay, I'm not saying I have a lot of energy. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I am still exhausted most of the day, but I went from being like 99% of my day was in bed to only like 70% of my day I'm laying around and in bed. 
but I feel like I've been able to clean a little bit more and do those types of things. I did have uh, my sweet mother came and deep cleaned my car and my bathrooms for me during this really hard pregnancy, which is just kind of a weight off my shoulders because even though I'm feeling better, I still am struggling to get that kind of stuff done, like the deep, deep clean. And so anyway, things are getting a little bit better in that way. I still have good days and bad days, but I feel like overall, I feel a lot better right now than I did a few weeks ago, so that's good. And then my contractions, although I just think they're all Braxton Hicks, they have started getting a little more painful. Um, pain that reminds me a little bit of uh, giving like labor pains, just not nearly as intense. So they're definitely like Braxton Hicks still. Um, but I'm curious to see at my 36 week appointment how dilated I am. So I'll let you guys know next week how that is going um, because I should get tested or they should check my dilation next week. So that's so crazy. I just, we're in the last stretch and I'm in that kind of nesting mode, wanting to get stuff done, realizing I'm not quite as ready as I thought I was with my daughter. I had everything ready by like 30 weeks, bags packed, everything that ev anyone had ever said on YouTube was a must have baby item. I went through all those videos and I got everything ready and this time I'm just like, not quite as ready as I thought I would be. Since my second one, I think I just thought I would be ready without even trying, but there's still a lot to do. So that's what I'm working on now. Anyways, I know we're already seven minutes in this video, but that is the update for this week. I'm trying to think if I've missed anything else. If I did, I will tell you at the end of this video, but I wanna answer your questions now. You guys asked me some really good questions. I'll try to get to all of them. We'll just see how long the video goes. If I don't get to all of them, I will answer them on Instagram for you. Amy underscore Esther. Okay, first question, what supplements do you take? So I have an entire video on this. I will link it down below. Sometimes I forget to do that. So if I forget, just remind me in the comments. Um, but I do have a video about all the supplements I'm taking while I'm pregnant and why I take them, all of that good stuff. Okay, how does this compare, this pregnancy compare to your first? So this one's definitely been harder and I'm not sure if it's just because I'm already taking care of a baby. Like with my first, it was just me and I wasn't working um, because of my chronic illnesses. I had quit my job. So I really could spend as much time like laying around as I needed to this time around. I don't know if it, that's why I've been so much more, more sick, but the other reason I have been so sick this pregnancy is because I've had a hard time helping my anemia. I was anemic with my daughter, but taking iron pills, like I remember feeling better within two weeks of taking iron pills. And as I continue to take those the rest of my pregnancy, I had no problems. And this time I've taken them my whole pregnancy and had issues the whole time. Um, I've tried all the tricks and I do feel like they're starting to work, but this little parasite just takes all of my nutrients. As long as he's healthy, he's taking all my nutrients. So this one's definitely been a lot harder than my first. I feel like I've been much more sick. Okay, um, what are your tips for labor with POTS? Okay, so, um, and by the way, I'm, I don't regret this pregnancy at all. I'm so, so happy to be pregnant. So blessed to have this baby boy. Like, I feel so ready for two kids. So excited. Okay, what are your tips for labor with POTS? Um, so I am going to do a whole video about this and I actually wanna do it after I give labor I, or go through labor again and give birth again, because I want to make sure it's fresh in my mind. Um, but a few things that I'm just going to think of off, think of on the top of my head would be that my nurse gave me um, some of these like surgical boots that squeeze your legs and they help your blood circulate. And so I got that while I was on the um, what's it called? The epidural, <laughs> sorry, brain fog. Well, I had my epidural because I couldn't walk and it was really hard for me. Like my legs were just so restless and it was hard for me to not be able to move. So that helped. And then also just like making sure everyone there knew about my conditions. So my doctor knew, my nurses knew. I had to teach my nurses what exactly POTS was, but my doctor has worked with POTS patients before, my OBGYN. So everyone there knew about my condition and that made it easier because everyone was on the same page. We all knew what was going on. So those would definitely be my tips for you. And then I also got induced with my daughter and I plan 
on getting a deuce with this baby. Like that's in the plan. Of course he could come early. He could come before we get induced. He can come at any time now <laughs> from between now and being induced. And then part of me would love if he came early because I want to meet him. I'm sick of being pregnant. <laughs> but then there's another part of me that just likes to have control. And especially with my chronic illnesses, it was really nice to have control during my whole labor. So not only was um, was I induced and like the labor was controlled, but my baby was watched the whole time. My heart rate, her heart rate were watched the whole time. So that's why being induced for me was a really good experience because I got to be monitored the whole time from the time labor started until I had my baby. Well, after that even, right? I monitored the whole time. So being induced to me, I feel like is a really good option for someone who has chronic illnesses so that you can be watched through all of it. Um, someone else asked me if I was afraid of labor. They said, I have POTS and I'm six months pregnant. Just wondering, are you afraid of labor um, and heart rate? So no, because I've given birth before. And like I said, I had a really good experience with my first labor and delivery, deliver, delivery, <laughs> delivery. I had a great experience with my first labor and delivery. Like I loved every minute of it. If you followed me on Instagram back in the day, then you know I just loved every minute of giving birth. I loved the whole process. I was of course miserable during the actual labor, even after my epidural, cause I couldn't move my legs, which is really frustrating to me. But my whole labor and delivery went so well. And it's because I was monitored the whole time. And my doctor and my nurses, they all knew all of my conditions and they were there and available and helping me through it. So if there was an issue, if my heart rate did get too high or something, they were there and we knew what to do. So that's another reason why I feel like being induced with chronic illness is a really good option. And it's definitely not, not something that I can choose for sure because you never know baby might come on his own but i am not afraid of labor and delivery at all i'm actually really really excited to go through it again i i love giving birth i do and who knows maybe this experience will be completely different and i will have a very traumatic birth and i won't feel the same way i don't know but right now i'm not scared to me worry is a completely unnecessary feeling Something I talked about in my miscarriage video is something that helps you guys a lot, which is that worry is just feeling a negative emotion in advance. So if I worry about labor and delivery, I'm feeling sad and scared and depressed and overwhelmed and anxious and whatever other feeling I'm going to feel during that time, I'm feeling it right now and I may or may not have a bad labor. I may or may not have a really good experience or really bad experience, but worrying about that right now doesn't help anything. It's just me prolonging that negative emotion or it's feeling that negative emotion for no reason. So anyways, if you want more on that, I have a miscarriage video. I will link it down below so you can watch that for more information on how I approach worry or I have a, a course chronically me, which I don't know if it'll be quite up and ready by the time that this video goes live, but it's almost, I'm revamping it. It's been up, so you guys have been in it, a lot of you um, have already done the course, but I'm revamping it, kind of like Chronicle Me 2.0, and I'm in the middle of finishing that up right now. Um, and once that goes live, make sure you follow on Instagram and I'll let you know when that is ready, but that will help you through those kind of fears. Um, the things I teach you in there, how to control your emotions, all of that information will be there. Okay, next question. Is giving birth worse with fibromyalgia? I have it and I'm scared. So I've never given birth without fibromyalgia. So I don't know. Um, fibromyalgia causes you to feel more pain than other people. So was my labor and delivery more painful than someone else's? Completely possible. I got an epidural, I could not go naturally. You guys know that I don't take a lot of medications. I am very weary about medications. I don't like to use them to treat my chronic illnesses. And I, I'm less weary about short-term medications. 
Long-term medications, I don't wanna be on a medication for life. I don't wanna be on medication for years, but for one day, if I'm in a lot of pain, if I'm having kidney stones, or I have an ovarian cyst rupture, or I'm in labor, like give me the meds, my friend. <laughs> I will take them over and deal with the side effects. I get, if there's a side effect, I get it. It happens every time. Um, every medication I've ever taken, I get the side effects and they're so bad. So anytime I have to take it more than like one day, I try everything I can to avoid that medication. But with an epidural, you guys, definitely worth it. And it only affects you from the waist down. And so it didn't cause me the other problems that most pain medications cause me. And so I had a really good experience with my epidural and I'm super sensitive to medication. Like I'm telling you anything. I can't take even Excedrin, over-the-counter stuff, makes me so sick. And I had no problems with my epidural except that my legs were really restless and so I'd have to make my husband move my legs around. So that was like an annoyance, but actual like side effects of the epidural, I had none. It wore off super fast within like an hour of giving birth. I felt no effects, I was walking around just fine. I had no issues at all. So, and then also after birth, and I'm gonna share as I've done these updates every week, I'm gonna keep doing them for at least six weeks after the baby comes to share with you the postpartum weekly updates as well because that is a whole different ball game. But my last labor and delivery, I recovered really well from that and it was not that painful. I know people who have really hard labors and deliveries, but me, I did not have that. So I don't think you should be scared of giving birth with fibromyalgia. Again, I feel like worry is just an, an unnecessary emotion. Um, that doesn't mean to say you don't take extra precautions if you need to, but get an epidural, my friend, and you'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Um, where are we at? Okay, we're still, we're like 20 minutes. So I'll just answer like one or two more. What is SIBO like with pregnancy? I am scared. Okay, so SIBO, super exciting news for my SIBO friends. The further along in your pregnancy, the better SIBO gets. Now, the day you have the baby, it'll probably come back. That's what happened to me last time. And I'm gonna assume it'll happen this time. But the bigger I get, the less stomach issues I have. It's kind of amazing. And I've talked to a lot of people who had SIBO and gotten pregnant and they all said the same thing. That the bigger they got, the, the less SIBO symptoms they felt. So I will do a whole video on SIBO and pregnancy. I'm also gonna do a whole video on fibromyalgia and pregnancy because I had a few more questions about that. Um, but I'll do a whole video just dedicated to those two and pregnancy. And then I also every trimester have done uh, POTS and pregnancy video. And so I'll do one more of those for the third trimester with POTS. So any of those questions about POTS with pregnancy, fibro and pregnancy, that I will answer all the rest of those in there. Okay, I, I did have a few more, but some of them weren't related to pregnancy or they will be answered in other videos. So I'm gonna stop it right there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have more questions for me, leave them down below. I'd be happy to answer even more on my next video or in any videos to come. So if you guys are interested in any, if you need any more advice, then let me know in the comments below. You guys are amazing. We are getting there so, so close. And I'll let you know next week how my doctor's appointment goes, my 36 weeks appointment. Hopefully baby's a little bit dilated. I guess not baby, me. I'm a little bit dilated. That means that things are moving along, but we will see. Maybe there's nothing, I don't know. Anyways, you guys, love you all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next week.